Hiya, so today I'm going to show you a time lapse of this painting and talk a little bit about art supplies and some of your recent questions plus some of the more common questions that I receive. So are art supplies important and should you care what you use to make your work? Um, no, not really. And also, yes, totally. My good friend Kim has been making watercolors for a couple of years now and I finally got to try them. They are handmade using earth minerals and natural pigments. And I'd say there's some difference between how these work and how commercial paints work, but mainly it's an energy difference. My only caveat is um, you might want to be conscientious of what paper you use if you're going to use a, a lot of layers when you paint with them because there are some coarse, I guess I would say, minerals in some of them that can mess up the paper a little bit if it's not the best quality. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that I found a lot of my art supplies in a dumpster, which is true. So getting to use handmade watercolor for the first time was really amazing and a fun adventure for me. So I had two concerns when I first started working with these. The first was details, like would I be able to create the same detail that I normally do with these natural pigments? And the second was brightness and saturation, like would they would the colors pop? So I'm really happy to report that both of those concerns were unfounded. There are a couple of swatches in these palettes that are more granular and the minerals in them are more pronounced, so they might not be the right ones for detailing, but then there are smooth ones that work just as well as commercial watercolors do. And the same goes for getting bright colors. Um, I sometimes actually mix my watercolors with a bit of ink, like um, blue or red ink, as I showed in my wolf time-lapse video. I associate natural pigments with things like terracotta and umbra and sienna, like beautiful earth tones, and Kim definitely has those um, in her palettes, but there are also these mineral to tones um, that will make your blues and pinks and reds, orange, everything really come out and be very saturated. So in that sense, it's exactly like working with any old watercolor. Um, the difference is definitely in the energy of these paints and how they were created, which is something I've talked about when it comes to clothes before and why I choose secondhand over fast fashion, and it's all sort of the same thing. It's about the vibe that the material carries. This is another thing that I've talked about before, how art to me is in a way a sacred thing, um, and I guess I have like an old school view of it where I believe that in part it's about channeling something, you know, removing your own blockages to let something sacred or otherworldly through and down onto paper. And I believe any art supplies can do this if the heart of the artist and the discipline of the artist are in the right place. But being a believer in magic, I think that earth crystals and minerals can certainly help you along the way. And they're right here in these paints, which was a big difference. I don't know. I have to say it kind of spruced up my will to paint and um, brought some new light and energy to my art making. And I really can't wait to use them more and see what they bring. I mean, this was kind of a little bit of a test run. <laughs> but anyway. So if you're just starting out, I would say don't worry too much about art supplies. Just um, find what's available, find what you can afford, and experiment and create and have fun. Um, so let's get to your questions about art supplies. And uh, the first one I received, and one of the most common ones, is about paintbrushes. I use synthetic brushes because I, for my style of painting, um, a lot of the animal hair ones are either too coarse or too soft, and the synthetic ones often fall kind of in between. Um, so I'll show you. These are all ones that I've had um, for a long time. I've had most of these for years. Um, one of the questions I got was, how often do you change your brushes? Whenever you need to. Um, you probably don't need to do it that often if you take care of them, and for that it's worth investing in a brush cleaning soap. Um, I can't remember what this costs, it's not a lot, you buy one, it lasts forever, um, and it makes your brushes last. 
have brushes that some of my art teachers in high school gave me. For the small ones, I, I'd say I pick up a new one like once a year maybe. These are Creator Studio. Another question was what brush is best to use for detailing creatures and nature scenes? This one or this one. A small brush, that's all you need. It's not so much in the brush, it's in the stroke. Like with this, if I'm having a bad day or I'm tired or I'm shaky because I accidentally had too much caffeine and I really can't handle it, um, strokes with this brush look horrible. They look like a five-year-old did them. And then if I'm having a good day and my hand is steady, um, they can look really crisp and pro. So it's all about training your hand, your hand-eye coordination, and not so much about the brush. I also received a couple of questions about pencils and pens, and someone talked about how micron pens are sometimes difficult to use over watercolor, and asking what else can I use instead. Um, I personally like micron pens a lot, and probably that's because I never tried to use them over watercolor. I color ink drawings sometimes, but then it would be with probably lighter washes of paint so that I didn't have to um, draw again over the painting. But um, you could try these, um, Pigment Liners, Spettler is the brand, my second uh, go-to brand for fine liner ink pens. Um, with that said, I use a lot of ballpoint, I love ballpoints, especially uh, Bic, that's the same company that makes uh, Bic lighters. And for the very last art supply question, um, it's about pencils. People ask what I like to work with, and it's uh, super thin technical pencils for the most part because I love the details. This is uh, 0 0.3. Two that I have are one Pilot 0 0.3 and one Pentel Graph Gear 3D 0 0.3. And they're both pretty good, but they're very... They break easily, so um, yeah, that's another thing where you want to get a decent brand and not something cheap. But I really like them a lot because when I do work in pencil, um, I either work only in pencil and then I want to bring out fine details, which this is perfect for, um, or I will paint over the pencil drawing, and in that case it's still good to have something that's very lightweight and thin and you can paint over it without, you know, the graphite sort of muddying up the watercolors, which is a real concern. In conclusion, here's a look at the finished artwork and a huge thanks to Kim for allowing me to try her amazing, natural, handmade watercolors. I could really feel a difference when working with them and I look forward to creating more. And when it comes to art supplies, I mean sure, quality is important and uh, it's amazing to try handmade watercolors, but in the end, if you can't afford anything nice, you can still make art and experimenting and finding the vibe that works for you is the most important thing. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. And as always, a big, big, huge, enormous wave of gratitude and thanks to my Patreon supporters because you make it possible for me to focus on doing stuff like this, which I adore and I want to be helpful. Thank you.